You want to ride your bike in winter, but the weather is wet, cold and horrible. Having the right kit can make it much more enjoyable and less grueling, but there are a lot of different options out there which can be confusing. So in this video, I'm gonna explain what to wear and when, depending on the weather and which kit to prioritize. I'm going to run through pretty much everything you'll need for riding in winter. So sit tight and you'll find out everything you need to know. But if you're in a rush or you're after one thing in particular, we've handily broken this video up into chapters so that you can jump around. There are loads of different winter kit options for different conditions, which I'll explain. And we're using Castelli kit in this video because well, they're our kit sponsor and they help make our videos possible, but also because they've got a very comprehensive range and a lot of the things that I discuss in this video are applicable to other brands too. When I decide what I'm going to wear for a winter's ride, the first thing I do is look outside and see what the weather's doing, and then I go and check the weather forecast online for my start point, and then also for my destination, because us cyclists can travel quite a long way. Then from that, I plan my kit. For each bit of kit, I'm going to explain what I would wear depending on different temperatures, ranging from 0 degrees through to around 6 degrees and then 12 degrees, because this temperature range is typically what we encounter while riding in winter. If you're thinking about cycling below 0 degrees, I wouldn't recommend it because not just, well, it's cold, but also because there's a risk of ice. So I'd either recommend you go indoors or off-road. The first thing we're going to consider is a base layer. It's the foundation of any good winter outfit and something that you shouldn't overlook. Now, they come in different gauges or thicknesses, and for the coldest weather, between 0 and 5 degrees, I suggest wearing one of the thickest ones available, such as this Flanders base layer I'm wearing. You can see that it has different fabrics on it to allow you to breathe and sweat in the key locations, but then also it's got a higher neck as well to help, help you insulate that area. Beginners often overlook base layers, and I've seen people trying to use just a standard cotton t-shirt they have lying around. The problem with this is it's not very good at wicking sweat away, it's not very breathable, and as a result, it gets wet, sweaty, which makes you smelly, and also cold. Synthetic fabrics like this provide excellent insulation for their weight, but as the temperature increases to around sort of eight degrees, six degrees, I'd consider wearing a slightly lighter, thinner long sleeve base layer, something like this. You can also see that it's got a longer tail to help you tuck into the back of your bib tights. And as the temperature rises to around eight or 12 degrees Celsius, and it's that bit warmer, I'd consider wearing a lighter base layer, perhaps even a mesh one, or one that's slightly thicker but without sleeves. That way you can use arm warmers with it too. In previous GCM videos, we suggested the tip that once you get to the cafe, you uh, can actually swap out your base layer and take a spare one with you so that you don't get cold because of the, the sweat once you stop moving. But in our experience, we found that this is actually a lot less necessary these days with modern jackets and fabrics that just breathe incredibly well. You should stay a lot drier, though this does depend on how hard you're working. Next up is tights, and again, they come in different thicknesses or gauges depending on the weather. If you're consistently riding around 0 degrees, then I suggest going for a heavier duty winter pair. They offer more insulation, and they sometimes have windproof panels in key locations as well to keep you warmer. But if you're only gonna get one pair of tights, then I'd probably suggest going for a medium gauge set. This is because they'll work in the widest temperature range, and you can often get away with them even when it is around zero degrees. That's because your legs tend to require less insulation than other parts of your body, such as the extremities. Bib tights, like the ones I'm wearing right now with the straps on, are ideal because they keep the tights nicely secure and in place. And the straps also mean that you have no cold air gap at the back. They hold the tight all the way up, so it means you don't get, well, a builder's bum and get cold. Cyclists will also wear leg warmers in conjunction with regular cycling bib shorts. This is 
a leg warmer here. Now, these I wouldn't recommend using in cold temperatures below six degrees or even probably eight degrees because the shorts aren't very insulated usually if they're regular shorts. They are, however, very versatile and ideal for riding in temperatures at around 12 degrees if you need that versatility. So if you're riding up and down mountains where it's very cold at the top of the mountain, but then at the bottom you want to whip them off because it's warm in the valley floor or perhaps you're warming up for a race and you don't want to get cold while you're waiting at the start of the race, leg warmers can be ideal. A good budget option that's also really versatile is to get a set of tights without a chamois pad. These are designed to be worn over the top of bib shorts that you already have and they usually cost less money than a set of dedicated bib tights with a chamois built in. They also have other features on them such as these ankle zips. This is so that you can get the tights on over a pair of uh, cycling shoes but also maintains a nice tight fit around the ankle as well. Next up is the jacket. Key features to look for are pockets on the outside, like a jersey. A dropped hem at the back is also useful to protect your bum from road spray. Now, in the coldest of weather, I'll wear a heavy winter jacket such as this Castelli Alpha Ross 2. It's super warm and I absolutely love it. And the thing is, with jackets like this, they're designed to be worn with just a base layer underneath. They're that effective at insulating you, which means that they're really breathable too. And a key feature of this one is it's actually two jackets in one. It's got an inbuilt liner, which you can unzip if you get too hot on the inside on a climb. The advantage is that if you get too hot, you can undo the inner liner and keep the outer one closed so that you don't have to have a sort of flappy jacket blowing around in the wind and making you less aerodynamic. Features that you should look for on jackets like this include water repellent coatings, breathable fabrics, and windproof fabrics too, which, you guessed it, stop the wind. But once the temperature gets to around eight degrees and above, I'll opt for a lighter jacket. This is a Castelli Perfetto. Now, it's essentially a long-sleeved version of the famous Gabba jacket, and it's made from Gore Windstopper, which is a class-leading fabric, it's brilliant. The way this fabric is breathable and the way it works is that it's not actually just one fabric, it's three different layers. So you've got the outer layer here, which is treated with a durable water repellent coating. And then on the inside, you've got this sort of fleecy inner layer. And then sandwiched between those is a kind of perforated sort of plasticky membrane, which helps keep a lot of the, the water moisture out. But because it's perforated, it's able to breathe too. If I actually hold it up to the light, you can see the little holes in it as well. You can see the light coming through it. Waterproof capes and jackets have improved a ridiculous amount over the last few years. They used to be zip-up bin bags that would, well, turn you into a human greenhouse, such as their lack of breathability, or they'd be waterproof the first couple of times you wore them and then not be waterproof. However, fabrics like Gore's Shake Dry has been a real game changer. It's found on a number of different brands jackets, including this Idro. It's super waterproof, it stays waterproof, it's really breathable, and when the rain stops and you're finished with it, it's super packable. It packs down to nothing, and then it can just be stored in your pocket. And a bit of science for you, the waterproof rating of jackets is usually tested using something known as the hydrostatic head test, whereby they get a portion of the fabric and then put a huge cylinder of water on top of it. And they gradually fill up this cylinder until the fabric fails and water starts to permeate through. And a waterproof jacket is classed as one that has a hydrostatic head rating of 10,000 millimetres of water at least before it permeates. The shake dry fabric, that's rated up to 28,000. It's proper waterproof. But the main downside to this kind of jacket and the reason why you don't wear them all the time is that they can add quite a bit of bulk and flap in the wind, which makes you considerably slower and a lot less aerodynamic. So if you're riding in showers and not riding in prolonged rain, or there's just a chance of rain, then I suggest wearing a water-resistant, stretchy, soft-shell fabric, such as found on the 
gather or the perfetto jacket, as you'll be much faster for the same effort. For around 12 degrees, I tend to opt for a long sleeve jersey or perhaps a gabber paired with some arm warmers. This is because you don't need as much insulation and these options are a bit tighter fitting, and more aerodynamic than a dedicated winter jacket. Overshoes come in different types too. So some are designed to keep your feet dry, some of them are designed to keep your feet warm, and some are designed to do both of those things. And I would recommend getting a pair that does do both because it just covers both bases and you're likely to find them useful in the widest range of conditions. Neoprene overshoes can be quite good as well. They tend to trap a layer of water which then insulates you, a bit like the same principle of a wetsuit. Also, classic GCN tip, if your feet still get cold even with overshoes on, then wrap some foil around your sock and then put it inside the shoe for added insulation. My brother swears by that technique. Now, overshoes also have the bonus of actually helping protect your shoes and keeping them clean. I tend to wear overshoes below 10 degrees, as at that point I need the added insulation. But it's very personal. Some people get cold feet at higher temperatures than that. Having cold hands feels utterly horrendous. It can completely ruin your ride and cause long-term damage. Plus, trying to change gear or pull the brakes when you can't feel your hands, well, that's not very pleasant either. My hands tend to really feel the cold, so when it gets for around 0 degrees to 5 degrees Celsius, I opt for a nice heavy duty pair of gloves like these bad boys that just offer loads of insulation and keep me snug. As gloves get thicker and bulkier, they generally offer more insulation, but the trade-off of this is that they're heavier, bulkier, and they offer less dexterity. The most expensive gloves will have a waterproof membrane built into them, something like Gore-Tex, but you can also get much more affordable ones like neoprene gloves, which are generally pretty good, although they don't typically work as well at those lower temperatures around 0 degrees. But a top money-saving tip is that you can take a lighter, less expensive pair of gloves and make them considerably warmer by wearing a pair of latex disposable gloves, or nitrile in this case, as inners. There you go, bonus tip. Around eight degrees, I'll wear a lighter fleece-lined glove, such as this, as it should keep you warm. And a feature worth looking for these days is special fingertips that allow you to use touch screens. This can be incredibly useful. Other bits of kit then, well, buffs. Buffs are great, they're really versatile. They help keep your neck warm. They can also keep your face warm if it gets cold or if you just wanna, you know, hold up your local cycling cafe. It's said that we lose most of our body heat through our heads and a great way of mitigating this is with a hat. Now from about eight to 12 degrees, I'll typically wear a cap with a peak like this. The peak's also useful at stopping rain spray and road spray coming up from the road and protecting your eyes. But when it gets lower, so below sort of six degrees or below eight degrees, I like to have my ears covered because they start to get quite cold. And so for that, I'll opt for a thermal skull cap such as this. Glasses are worn in winter too. The sun is often lower in winter, meaning it can be quite glaring, but you may want to opt for a lower light lens. Glasses offer protection from the wind, the cold, they stop your eyes watering, but also just the same debris and bugs that you can encounter in summer. One final word on visibility is that in winter, you often have less light and daylight hours are shorter. And I'd suggest that you use either really bright clothing or you opt for clothing that has highly reflective details on it, such as ours. You can't actually tell right now, but very reflective. Another item which I'd say is optional, but really useful is a gilet or a vest. These can provide some extra insulation to you and then if you're too warm or you don't need it anymore, they're very easy to take off and then they pack down to very little and can be stored in your jersey pocket. They're really good if you're starting out and your ride is really cold but it's going to warm up later on or if you want a bit of extra warmth while you're at the cafe stop. One thing I would recommend though is you go for one that has pockets in the back because trying to reach your pockets underneath your gilet while you've got cold hands and wearing thick gloves can be like sort of well trying to play pin the tail on the donkey with oven gloves on. 
How warm or cold you get while riding in winter is very personal and it will also depend on how hard you're actually riding. But fine tuning your clothing is something that you'll learn the more experienced you get at riding outdoors in winter. I hope you found this video useful and if you have please give it a thumbs up and also let us know down in the comments below what your winter riding clothing tips are and what your favourite bit of kit is. Mine I think is definitely this jacket. So, so snug.